Ok, let's discuss wormholes. Theoretical structures that might connect different points of space-time that are actually based on Einsteinian equations. A concept that's existed for over 100 years and that has actively been studied by a lot of scientists proposing different explanations, different mathematical models and basically arguing whether such objects really exist. And though in some sense a typical wormhole can be visualized like this, literally representing a hole through space-time connecting two different points somewhere out there. Despite all of these visualizations and all of these models, as of 2024, there is still no evidence that they actually exist. But in spite of this, a lot of prominent physicists have actually been trying to find a way to first potentially explain what they might look like, but to then also propose what kind of effects these would have on actual matter, and most importantly, whether anything can actually pass through them. And though obviously one day, this would be the ultimate goal. According to most modern theories, this is probably impossible. And mostly for several reasons. First of all, quite a lot of modern theories suggest that by passing through the wormhole, any matter, even a single atom, are actually most likely going to completely shut it down. Second of all, to even stabilize these wormholes, we would probably require some kind of a exotic negative energy or possibly negative mass. And though some scientists propose that maybe mysterious cosmic strings can actually come to the rescue and potentially stabilize them, in this sense, cosmic strings are also still theoretical and have never been discovered. But what we are going to tackle is a new study that basically tries to help us visualize them and provide some solutions for what they might actually look like somewhere out there. And so, how wonderful person, this is Anton. Let's discuss this new study by the researchers from the famous Perimeter Institute in Canada and basically discuss what they've discovered. Although I guess first, a few more clarifications. Most theoretical physicists, such as Stephen Hawking and Kip Thorne, that studied wormholes the most, basically agreed that there might be two types, traversable wormholes and non-traversable wormholes. In other words, there are wormholes that you can maybe travel through, potentially reaching some kind of a different area or maybe even a different universe, which is basically your typical wormhole from any science fiction. But once again, these scientists have also agreed that you would definitely need something exotic to stabilize them and to prevent their mouth from shutting down. With the overall conclusion being that it's quite likely that if these wormholes do exist, they possibly exist for like a fraction of a second or possibly existed in the early universe and all basically shut down. But some of them could be microscopic, and these could be possible without any exotic matter. But they would still require certain charged particles, once again in order to stabilize everything. And this is actually something that was proposed by Cape Thorne a while back. And so even though theoretically maybe they could exist, it's quite unlikely to be produced naturally. Likewise, certain propositions involved quantum physics. And here some scientists propose that maybe some tiny wormholes can actually appear and disappear spontaneously, just like your typical quantum particles. But there's no evidence of that either, so at least for now, pretty much everything here is just pure hypothesis. But nevertheless, when it comes to understanding what they might look like, they've always been compared to black holes. And so even though this is what the actual tunnel might look like, here's what a wormhole orbiting a black hole would look like. And so in some sense they both resemble each other and even produce very similar gravitational effects. Which is exactly what was proposed by Einstein and Stephen Hawking back in the days. But for black holes we know that nothing can actually escape the event horizon, which is of course why they appear black if there is no other matter around them. And likewise, in some definitions of a wormhole, maybe nothing can actually travel through it either. As in, it's basically like the opposite of a black hole, so nothing can pass through the event horizon and everything gets ejected. But in this new study, the researchers decided to focus on traversable wormholes, just to imagine what they might really look like somewhere out there if we actually wanted to one day find them. And here's I guess the important side note. So far, based on all of the previous propositions, nothing out there resembles any wormhole whatsoever. We see a lot of black holes, we see a lot of neutron stars, we actually see a lot of things that can usually be explained by using modern physics, but so far not a single object out there resembled any wormhole. And so maybe they just don't exist. 
But in this study, the scientists see this a little bit differently, and they actually do propose something that we might be able to see after all. And here they basically focus on two separate parts, or I guess two separate mouths, with one of these mouths basically acting like a typical black hole. Because it has a lot of mass, it starts to accrete matter and even potentially creates some kind of an accretion disk. But a lot of this falling matter then basically gets trapped inside the throat, in essence forming a rotating cloud very very similar to an accretion disk. But unlike a black hole, it would also have an extremely bright center, formed by super hot plasma stuck inside of this throat, because all of this matter suddenly gets condensed to really high densities and really high pressures, and essentially forms plasma extremely similar to a typical star. And this might even start nuclear reaction, producing ridiculously high temperatures. Which essentially means that traveling through this wormhole would be kind of impossible. Anything approaching this would very likely experience the same effects as entering the center of a star. Which basically means it would get burned instantly. And if this wormhole is large enough, it might even produce something resembling a super hot star. Which is maybe one way we could actually detect this, by detecting exotic stars that seem to glow in a very unusual way and potentially have an accretion disk around them, it would hint at the existence of these objects. But as of 2024, nothing that exotic has been discovered yet. So far, all of the exotic objects have been explained in much more mundane ways. But interestingly, the other side of the wormhole might actually produce something a little bit different. It would also produce a lot of emissions, but in this case, this other mouth would look like an unusual sphere full of extremely bright glowing fog that might even be spewing out matter at approximately 20% the speed of light. So basically we would have this unusually bright object that seems to be emitting very powerful, very fast winds at a fraction of the speed of light. And that will be visible from a lot of locations. And that has never been seen before. But the more important part here is that both mouths would be visible and producing slightly different emissions. One resembling a really bright black hole with an unusual accretion disk, and one resembling an unusually powerful emitter with the matter escaping at very fast velocities. And so if one day we find an exotic object that seems to produce these emissions, I'm sure everyone is going to start talking about this study once again. But for now this is all just modeling, just hypothesis, and actually a hypothesis with a few shortcomings. For example here, by passing through the wormhole, any matter will probably destabilize it, thus changing the emissions over time, or possibly even collapsing the wormhole if enough mass passes through it. Likewise, any plasma that passes through this will obviously have its own mass, and this will create too many instabilities, very likely causing a lot of changes inside and outside, which have not been simulated in this case. And so in that sense, traversable wormholes are actually still kind of difficult to explain, and based on the visual evidence, potentially don't exist at all. But non-traversable wormholes could exist and could resemble black holes, and those we've discovered pretty much everywhere. Either way, this is still a somewhat exciting study, because it basically finally shows us what we can technically look for if we physically wanted to find one of these objects somewhere out there. And actually, for all we know, maybe one of these will be discovered, or possibly has been discovered, but was actually misidentified as something else over time. And so once there are some updates about this, or someone actually discovers something that resembles one of these objects, we'll come back and talk more about this in one of the future videos. Until then, thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye.